Today's message is, Jesus teaches about fulfilling the law. A subtopic is, Be the Difference, and is coming out of Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 13 through 20. And if for the background, we know last week we talked about the Beatitudes, which displays the holy living and how the Christian character and attitudes of Christians. Uh, we are different from the world. So this lesson, uh, kind of a follow-up to last week's lesson, because you, as you will see as we go through the lesson, that, yeah, as, as we, we who are Christians, um, walking in the light of Christ, we are seasoning and shining light in a, in a darkened world. So the question I have posed, are we fulfilling the responsibilities as Christian? So let's just begin this discussion by answering the question, what is salt? Salt is a seasoning used to season food just as it was during Jesus' time and it is today. Salt is a spice and it's a flavoring for our food. So if we put uh, salt on our food to give it a, a, a better taste, as some people will say. Today we've gotten so martyred that salt seems to be a bad thing. But it is not, because it is a preservative, and it's still seasoned food. And say salt comes in different um, varieties or of derivatives of salt. You have seasoning salt, which is a derived from salt. And if you look at there's different other seasonings that has salt in it. It has a salt base. So yes, yeah, salt is a seasoning. It is a preservative. And it was used in the old days to preserve food and especially uh, fresh meat. And if we can reflect on just uh, the old days a little bit when refrigeration weren't as prevalent as it is today, we see that uh, when the, the, the men or the farmers or uh, the butchers would kill a hog or a cow, they used salt to preserve the meat and it would not spoil. As I said, since uh, refrigeration wasn't as prevalent and widely used as it is today. Then salt is an influence. Okay, how is it of influence? Well, we said salt has an influence. Let's just look at how Jesus and his disciples, when they was proclaiming the gospel message, influenced the world. It began from a humble beginning where the disciples went and it started in their Jerusalem. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall see God. Uh, we are the, dis, uh, the Beatitudes are on display daily and has a tremendous amount of influence in the world in which we live. If you are to say, how so? The world, well, it's because the world see Christ in our lives, in our daily lives. As we walk in the light of Christ, as we proclaim the gospel message, of Christ and as we are proclaiming it we are seasoning the world with the true Word of God uh, Christians are walking in the light of Christ and his righteousness why his righteousness because we in and of ourselves has no righteousness because on the cross Christ took our unrighteousness and gave us his righteousness Therefore, we are walking in the light of Christ and manifesting the righteousness of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. And the third, as we walk in the light of Christ and obey the Holy Spirit, we are being led by God, the Holy Spirit, 
who dwells in every believer. Uh, the Christian who actually has the attitude of the salt and light of the world, they will have a positive influence on the world. And this is part of our mission, so we are open at the great commission that was issued by Christ himself. As recorded in Matthew uh, 28, 19, and 20. And we are to proclaim the good news throughout the world. Um, we can also see that uh, salt is an influence, and our, uh, we as the salt, we as believers as the salt, influence our lives are directly related to our disposition and our character. Okay, our character is our makeup. And if we have taken on the righteousness of Christ, we too then display, as I said earlier, and manifest Christ and his righteousness. And as we are being led by the Holy Spirit, we can further influence the world around us, as opposed to allowing the world to influence us. Yes, we have God, the Holy Spirit, living in us, so we can be that influence and that light that Jesus uh, made his parabolic teaching to his disciples that is applicable to all of us today and for generations to come and generations past. Our holy life makes a deep impression on the people around us. Why so? Because our character and disposition reflect like Christ and it also reflects what we as Christians believe. Yes, we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes, we believe that Jesus Christ hung and died on the cross, atoning the sins of the world. And yes, we believe that if we accept him as our personal Savior, we shall be saved. Because that was promised to us in John 3.16. And what we know that is Jesus, God, the Father, always keeps his promise. Just like he promised us the Savior, Jesus, he kept that promise because Jesus came. When he promises to supply all our needs, he keeps that promise. And when he promised that, yes, uh, Jesus Christ, our Savior, is going to return one day, we can expect that with assurances. Yes, Jesus Christ is coming back for his own right. So when we uh, walk in holiness, yes, we have uh, a positive impact on the world around us. Okay, let's just look at salt and light as our common household as they relate to our Christian growth. Salt and light prevents spiritual or moral decay. What does that mean? Without Christians in the world, Season the world with the truth of God's world. It will become spiritually depraved. What does that mean by spiritually depraved? If we as Christians stop seasoning the world with the truth of God's world and not wa and stop walking in the light and the holiness and the righteousness of Christ, the world will have nothing to look forward to. It will become spiritually dark and wicked, and there will become a decay. Now, take for this. Look at it this way: if we uh, don't preserve our food, uh, and we're talking about meat now, it will begin to rot, and it would, and, and it's no longer any good. So uh, we don't want to live in a rotten world, and we too as uh, believers who are the salt and the light, we must continue to season the world and be the shining light in the world for all men to see. Christians are the spiritual seasoning that brings moral clarity to the world. But what does that mean? We are the conscious of God speaking morality 
to an immoral world. Many in the world of the world's sins that are running rampant begs this question. Have we as Christians lost our saltiness? Let's hope not. Because if we lose our saltiness, as the scriptures say, that we will be thrown out and trampled on the man's feet. Because what is he saying there? If we lose our saltiness, if we fail to declare the word of God, man will just walk over us with sin. Uh, so what do we must do here? We are to continue making a difference. And we have to stay prayed up ourselves, stay in the Word of God, and continue to be led by the Holy Spirit, so we will not lose our saltiness, so we will become of no good uh, in Christ's mission of continuing to proclaim the truth of His Word to all the world. Uh, then to, let before I say this, but yes, we are in a battle with Satan, but thank God he dressed us in his body armor for us to be victorious. And this body armor is recorded in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and verses 10 through 18. And if you notice and look at those uh, weapons that he dressed us in, they're all defensive weapons except this one. And that one is his word, and he's called our sword. That is what we use to take the fight to, so, uh, to Satan. And uh, we have victory because Jesus Christ won the battle over sin and Satan on the cross. And we are uh, in Christ, we, have, we are victorious as well. Then, uh, if we fail to keep seasoning the the world with our, our salt, being the season, we as Christians, we lose our credibility. Then we have no influence on in the world. We will then be trampled on the, the feet of men. The rubs us is that we will be living in a rotten world with the stench of sin. Why? Because salt, we as salt, have lost our flavor. We are no longer adding a spiritual spice to a world that knows no Christ, knows no God, have rejected God and his righteousness. Uh, the next question I want to ask uh, is, what is meant by the phrase salt bites? Remember that salt is the flavoring spiritual flavoring for the world. It means that salt declares the unadulterated truth of God's word. It does not compromise God's word. What it says is what it says. Just like that. And we know that the truth hurt. Some people would rather hear a lie, hear and not only hear it, but believe a lie before they want to hear and believe the truth. The truth can be staring them directly in the face. They will still reject it and accept the lie. But when they do, when they realize or come to themselves and say, it's best that I accept the truth, yeah, it bites because it is like a two-edged sword. It cuts going and coming. It peels away all of the unrighteousness and he uh, opens the door for the show that, yes, my righteousness is of Jesus Christ. Then, whenever we hear the truth of God's word, believe it and adhere to it, we will be in a better condition. We have been seasoned with the salt, uh, the true saltiness of God's word. His grace and his judgment uh, will protect us 
is it's his truth that we are going to be, we have to live by. And it's his God's truth that we are be, and his standards that he will be judged by. Because now he does judge and punish his sin. But he is so long suffering that he gives us time to repent and turn from our wicked ways. But it is God's desire that all men be saved. But he is all knowing. He knew that many was going to reject him and be lost forever. So, but even in his love and his still continued desire for us to be saved, men to be saved, he left his followers, who we are called believers, or his disciples of Christ, to continue seasoning the world with the truth of his good word. And we are shining light in a darkened world through our holy living. Look at it this way. The two headlights on the car. And they're driving down a dark road. And when those lights are on, and now in these modern day cars, they come on as soon as you turn the switch on. They are lighting the way for some who have not seen the light. This brings into the scripture verse, Psalms 119 and 105. And it said that uh, word is a lamp unto my path. You know, it directs us. And I'm kind of misquoting it here. But uh, it is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's what it says. So, and when we can accept those and to accept God's word for what it is, and be a humble ourselves to obey God's word, then we are making a difference. And as the new converts come into the, uh, the saving grace of Jesus Christ, uh, they too become salt and light in the world. See, this is an ongoing process. Uh, it's not a one-time deal. Jesus' death on the cross was, because he was a he was the human sacrifice that God the Father required to atone sin. But uh, the teaching and seasoning uh, the world around us with the truth of God's word, that's an ongoing thing. And shining and lighting by living holy, that's an ongoing thing. It's not a one-time event. If it was a one-time event, I myself never would have uh, seen the light of Christ. I saw it by being around other Christians and their teachings about God and living what they taught. And now the torch has been passed on to my generations and generations coming before me. This is a, a cycle that we must continue to teach and preach and live in holiness. Okay, so let's continue on this road of looking at how salt bites and people not wanting to hear the truth uh, and I want the truth watered down. Uh, uh, they want the truth to bend to that situation. Let's look at uh, one of uh, homosexuality. We know what the scripture says about that. So what I'm saying, we cannot water it down we, even though we're not judging. You simply tell the person what the scripture says and leave it at that. Look at sexual uh, fornication. We know what the scripture says about that. Everything we want to encounter, the sinful the scripture speaks on it and what we should not do. But uh, we, it's up to us, I mean humanity, and even believers, to believe and stand for steadfast on the truth of God's word. There is no compromise in on the truth. Okay, uh, now we've touched on briefly about Christians at the light of the world, and we know that light dispels darkness. Christians who are living the Beatitudes are the light of the world. Again, because we are shining the light of Christ in this darkened world. Take the smallest candle and sit it in a room the darkness dissipates, as I mentioned about the headlights. Yeah, 
light always dispels darkness. And so who are the light? We are as Christians. Just as Jesus used salt as a, uh, to prevent spiritual decay, he uses light to spell the darkness in this world because of sin. That's how darkness got in. We as believers are that light. Collectively, we are the city that is set on a hill. Another way to look at light is that the sun gives light. The moon reflects that light. Jesus is the light. His disciples uh, are the light because his disciples and all believers reflect on the light of Jesus Christ. So, a, a question. How did the disciples shine the light of Christ? They did so because, and all believers, because they lived lives of purity and righteousness reflecting the light of Christ and his righteousness. This is what we are to do today. And we cannot uh, forsake our responsibilities. Yes, we're going to be in some hostile territory because the world is hostile to Jesus. It hated him and it's going to hate us. But we cannot uh, falter in our commission. We cannot falter in our holy living. We cannot falter in continuing to preach and teach Christ. And I think, uh, uh, let's just look at it this way. Uh, the last verse on our scripture text in verse 16. Um, it said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And these are some encouraging words from Jesus. And it speaks to our steadfastness, our perseverance, and our uh, determination and commitment to stand firm on the truth of God's word. We are to remain focused on our responsibility of telling others about Christ. We all have a testimony of what Christ has done for us. If we had not heard the word and allowed the Holy Spirit to convict us of our sin, we would still be lost. So, um, and if we want to look at verses, I uh, not want to, but please do, Verses 17 through 20 are further encouragement for his disciples and us today because we will have naysayers, those are the doubters, of our righteousness must overshadow that of the naysayers because we have a, the righteousness of God that was given to us by his son Jesus. So we have every reason to stand firm on the truth of his word. We have every responsibility to continue to tell the world about our risen Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. We have every reason and responsibility to continue living holy lives as we are emulating our Heavenly Father because he is righteous and he is God. Remember this. And I always say this, God the Father created us, God the Son saved us, God the Holy Spirit keeps us. So, and that ho the Holy Spirit who lives in us is that little small steel voice that speaks to us when we uh, we get weary or want to quit the race. commissioned by Christ himself 
to go ye into all the world. Teach and preach, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, back to my original question. And hopefully, based on what we have discussed of the meaning of salt and light and who it represents and what is the purpose of it, we can go back and answer this question uh, within our own self. Are we fulfilling our responsibilities as Christians of season in the world with the righteous salt of God and lighting the way for all those who in darkness this is what everyone has to decide for him or herself i can only tell you about me and i can only tell you that yes i'm walking in the light of christ and yes i am proclaiming the truth of god's word and no i will not compromise on the truth of god's word that I must believe the entire book of the Bible because uh, it is all written for our benefit. It is for our reproof, our correction, our doctrine. And one thing about it, it was written by holy inspired men of God as was able uh, directed by God the Holy Spirit so there would be no error in what God intended uh, no miscalculations just as what God intended for us to have for us to know and for us to live by so yes we have a responsibility to tell others about the good news of Christ. Yes, we have a responsibility as we have been called out by God to live in holy communion with Him. Yes, we have a responsibility to be the light in this sin-darkened world. And let's remember, we have a service record that is being kept in heaven. And in one day, our service record is going to be read before us. And what we do here on earth is being stored up in heaven. And I know that most of us, and I can say, if I can say to all Christians, want to hear the Father say, good and faithful servant, well done. You have been faithful over a few things. And he said, come on up here to higher heights. Yes, that famous phrase that faithful, good, good and servant, what job well done. So we won't hear that unless we stay committed and stay focused and keep doing what we have been commissioned to do. So let me encourage you once again, and I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but we are the call, and we were called by God to be his workmanship, to continue shining the light of his righteousness in this world. Yes, he left us here in this world. But we are not of this world. We are no longer just uh, alienated from our Creator. We have been called and selected by Him. And we are members of His royal priesthood. We are family members and His holy nation of priests. And yes, we are the elect, the very elect of God, who has called us. He loved us so much that he called us out of darkness. And as we can pray this prayer, 
Lord our Father, I think that these words and this message will find some of us all well, and we will be willing and able to first come out of the darkness into the marvelous light. And then we too will commit ourselves to being salt and light in this world of darkness, of sin and shame. But it is God's desire, God the Father's desire, that we too may be saved and live eternity in heaven with him. And Father, I pray that all that who is hearing this prayer and have heard this message will find it and let it prick your heart that yes, and say, yes, I too am a child of God. Yes, I too am going to continue to be salt and light in this world so other men might see it and say, what must I do to be saved?